The Yale Town neighborhood, which is the old expo grounds, uh, was, was a very desolate kind of a, an area. You never saw any people down there. When you cross the tracks down to where the roundhouse was, it was all mud and weeds and it felt very derelict, it felt abandoned. After Expo 86, I was called up in a couple years later to work on selling the land. So we had to put together packages of information for all the Expo lands, including the Roundhouse. The Expo land was uh, offered to the world to bid for it, and Lee Kashin from Hong Kong was interested. So he asked me if I would sort of join him, and uh, we worked out all the numbers. We made the bid. And we won, because we offered the best design and the highest price. When I was involved in the Art Against Racism show in 1989, we were looking for a venue to host this large international show. The Roundhouse itself was a building that offered up this huge open space, and that was really what we were looking for. Uh, the art scene in the late 80s and early 90s was a really a challenging situation in that there was a distinct lack of venue for large exhibitions. Artropolis in 1990 was at the Roundhouse and it showed once again what a great space it was for the arts. And following Artropolis, artists began to lobby the city and the park board to retain the use of the space for the arts. It was innovative thinking at the time to think of building a community centre that focused on the arts and the notion of combining arts and recreation was new, the notion of artists as community builders was brand new. It was a very exciting time. Through the creation of an arts policy in the 1990s, community cultural development was explored and the role the arts play in connecting people and valuing the collective creative process. When the land was sold, one of the provisions that the province who owned the land put in was there had to be a 25 foot wide seawall walkway along the entire perimeter. Trying to come up with a happy medium as to all the desires. Parks wanted one thing, engineering wanted something else, and just trying to come up with a a collaboration that worked for all the groups was um, pretty amazing to watch. We had to go through about 170 public meetings. There are people in church halls who want to talk about it. I would go and discuss it. And I think I learned a lot from that. And a lot of the things that the people want are actually very much what a developer wants. So when you put the two things together, it's really a win-win situation for everybody. It was the first time that the Park Board had developed a community centre from scratch with a, an unknown neighbourhood. They had anticipated that it would be a very adult neighbourhood that would be interested in the arts, so they created an advisory committee to the Board to ensure that as the community centre developed, we didn't step in the wrong direction. So we had theatre artists and dance artists and visual artists advising on what would be critical to make spaces work. This project over 204 acres is so big we can't put the taxpayers on the hook for a lot of public amenities so we deliver parks and seawall walkways, daycares, we build all the streets, all the infrastructure to service our developments. But this was completely unprecedented. So it's the building and selling the homes that are on our site that actually pay for the parks and the seawall walkway and the community centers. And when the Roundhouse first opened, it was extremely quiet. And it was the job of the Roundhouse Community Association Board to develop a vision for the centre. And the process of community engagement through the arts were integral to this. Then I was very happy to um, 
get on the board of the Roundhouse for several years it was a real challenge to fill the workshops and to fill the classes and to get the programming right. So we had to do a lot of outreach in the community. It unfolded step by step, you know, as each new building would come, there would be a high rise of seniors and all of a sudden seniors programs became in, of interest. Or there would be another building that would open, a, a co-op would open, and so there would be more families. And The Roundhouse is one of the very few community centers that draws citywide and beyond because of the kinds of programming it gets into. Artists were very instrumental in doing things that would show the possibilities of what could happen in the, the community centre. I remember going down there on a Saturday morning doing some inspection and watching people come out of their units in their house coats and slippers and go to buy a coffee. And that's when one of my friends said, this is now a neighborhood. The Yale Town area is a very vibrant, exciting place to live. I think people are so proud to, to be near the Roundhouse, to be in the Roundhouse neighborhood. So I think that has a tremendous contribution to really developing as a place for the people. Obviously the Roundhouse is a great place and I think set a standard across Canada for where a community centre really can go. In that integration of arts and culture and recreation is very cutting edge. It's such a great anchor to the newly evolved neighbourhood of the city.